welcome to the Prophecy Club, where we provide information and resources with a prophetic warning message to win souls to Jesus and to call people to repentance. And I used to say, where we study and research Bible prophecy, as that's what we're going to be doing today. I'm going to be answering a big question for you. Many people do not think that America is in the Bible. Well, I'm about to give you my opinion over 50 different reasons it is in the book of Revelation. So let's get started. Let's go, first of all, to Revelation 18.2. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and has become the habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit, and the cage of every unclean and hateful bird. Now, let's also jump to, I'm going to explain each one of these, Revelation 17.5. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery Babylon. I believe that those are the two words that should be uh, I would I would remove the comma in between mystery and Babylon. I think that's one name, mystery Babylon, because mystery means I'm not going to tell you that it's talking about America. You got to figure it out, mystery Babylon. And then the second name is the Great. I think that's a whole other name, the Mother of Harlots. That's another name, an abomination to the earth. So it's mystery Babylon, the Great, the Mother of Harlots, and abomination to the earth. Really three names. All right, let's take it apart now. The Great. Why do we think that's talking about America? Well, here's a question. What nation, by both the left and the right, both Democrats and Republicans, both people that are conservative and liberal, what is the nation that both of them agree is probably the greatest nation on earth? America. What nation elected a president which ran on the slogan, Make America Great Again? Answer, America. Question, do you think that in the spirit, God could have given America the name the great as a result of Trump's use of it and our acceptance of the phrase, make America great again? I believe so. So I believe that the book of Revelation actually refers to America, the great, 14 different times. Now, I've summarized them. Revelation 14, 8, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, the great city. 16, 19, the great city, great Babylon. 17, 1, the great whore, I'll just summarize them. Mystery Babylon the Great, Babylon the Great, the great city Babylon, the great city, so great riches have come to naught. What city is like into this great city? The great city wherein were made rich, a great millstone cast into the sea, for thy merchants were the great men of the earth, for he hath judged the great whore which did corrupt the earth. I believe all of those are referring to what I believe Donald Trump hung the name on us of the great. I believe is fallen is fallen is actually talking about two judgments coming on our beloved nation. And by the way, I do not want to see this come. Matter of fact, we have about 700 some odd people that are on a fast track team that fast every Tuesday night, midnight till Wednesday afternoon at four o'clock. You can join it by going to prophecyclub.com. And we never have any product offers and never ask you for any donations. This is only if you want your prayers to count for more. If you want to pray and fast with other fellow believers, then go to prophecyclub.com, sign up to be on the fast track team. We have them praying that God will soften, delay, and in some cases, remove judgment. I have another broadcast talking about when it is a warning versus when it is a prophecy, and it's not going to be turned away. I believe these are prophecies not going to be turned away, but we can still pray that they'll be softened and delayed. I believe as fallen as fallen means that there's two judgments coming on America. One is associated with the beginning of World War III when Russia attacks. According to what Dmitry Dudeman was told, the fall of America will start with an internal revolution. Started by the communists. Some of the people will start fighting against the government. The government would be busy with internal problems. Then from the oceans, Russia, Cuba, Nicaragua, Central America, Mexico, and two of the countries will attack and defeat America in one day. In one hour, so great riches will come to naught. Then God will raise up China, Japan, and many of the nations. They'll go against the Russians. They'll defeat the Russians. They'll back the Russians to the gates of Paris where they sign a peace treaty, but they make the Russians their leader. Then under the leadership of the Russians, all the world goes down to attack little Israel, and that's Armageddon. Israel can't count on the help of the Jews in America. Secret so cries for Messiah. Messiah returns on the clouds and defeats the armies of the earth. That's the first fallen is at World War Three. The second fallen is associated with the return of Jesus. The first one is an, a nuclear attack by the Russians. The second one is Jesus himself 
destroying us. The first one is because of sins in the church. The second one is because of the Christian blood shed in this nation. Very different. Now, is fallen has become uh, fallen has fallen, and it's become the habitation of devils. Now, I don't think we're totally there yet, but this is describing our nation when judgment finally falls. And I want to believe that we still have a few more years. I want to believe that maybe we could even stretch it out to 5, 10, who knows, maybe even 15 years. But some people think it's a lot sooner than that. Some people think it's only a few years. I don't know. But this is a description of just how bad it's going to be in our America in America by the time we fall. Now, I don't know if it's describing the first fall or the second one, but probably this is describing the first fall associated with the Russian attack. It's becoming the habitation of devils and the hold of every foul spirit and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. Now, a question. What nation was once the example of purity and holiness? who has now fallen into sin and has become a nation of liars, cheaters, money grubbers. Answer, what nation was once the Christian nation to hold up before all the nations as a shining city on the hill, the nation to be admired and followed as the example? What nation was once the first to be self-governed after its success? Many nations also rebelled against their oligarchies and monarchies, to form a self-government. In other words, who led the way to freedom? Answer, America. Now let's specifically look at the words foul spirit in that verse. So I looked up the word foul. Question, does this describe the Democrats, the left, those who hate America? Evil, wicked, bad, wrong, immoral, sinful, vile, dishonorable, corrupt, ingenuous, depraved, villainous, nefarious, vicious, malicious, Mm, my answer would be, yeah, pretty pretty close to it. <laughs> uh, yeah, and let me just say, not all Democrats are bad, just like not all Republicans are good. But there's a whole lot more that appear to be good, at least these days, as Republicans versus the Democrats. And let's put it this way. If you're a Democrat, it'd be a real good time to repent, turn to Jesus, and get out of that mess. Verse 3. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. We're going to discuss that. And the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. Now, there's three verses here that say so many things that are the same, so I've lumped them all together, and then we're going to kind of divide or, or, or dig into each one of the verses. Revelation 19.2, For true and righteous are his judgments. For he had judged the great whore, this America, which did corrupt the earth with her fornication and hath avenged the blood of his servants at her hand. Then let's go to Revelation 14, 8. And there followed another angel saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen. By the way, that's not the same. There's three different places in the Bible where it has Babylon is fallen, is fallen. That's the second of them. The great city, because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. Question. What nation has the power and means to corrupt other nations of the earth? Germany? No. Do we watch German films? No. Do we listen to German music? Norway, Sweden, Denmark, England. The answer, America. In almost every case, it's America. What nation makes the movies, television shows, news? Did you know that the world watches our news? <laughs> they watch our news more than they do the news in their own nation. Why? Because we lead the world. They read our books, listen to our music. That the rest of the earth consumes all of these coming from America. Only America stands in a position to either raise the name of Christ or put down the name of Christ. What does America put in those movies, television shows, news, books, music? Well, the answer is pretty much anything but Christ and everything pushing them away from Christ. Now, let's go back to those verses. We're still here in Revelation 18, and I want to specifically talk about all nations are drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. What does that mean? It means that we are the nation that's pushing people away from Christ. We used to be the nation that distributed the Bibles. Now we're the nation that pushes people away from Christ. When it says drunk of the wine, that means that they have watched our movies. They have watched our television shows, our news, our books, our music. That, that's the wine of the wrath, meaning 
That's the wine that they drank. That's the going along with it. And here, here there's another verse that says in verse Revelation 19, 2, it says, The great whore did corrupt the earth with her fornication. Verse 14, 8 says, She made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of fornication. You're going to say, no, wait, 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 wait. You're going to tell me that America made all of these nations drink of this wine? You're going to tell me that America made all of the nations watch our movies, our television shows, news, books, music? Well, you know, we can't see behind the scenes like God can. But if we could, my suspicion is that Hollywood has gone behind the scenes and they've specifically seen to it that other nations do not make the kind of movies and big productions and television shows and news. In other words, they've seen to it. They are the, how should we say, only source. They've diverted all the other rivers, so they're the only river in town. You want to drink, you got to drink from their river. I can't prove that, but I believe that to be true, meaning that America has seen to it that if you're going to watch a movie, television, shows, books, news, things, they're pretty much it. They're seen to it that those things come to pass. Now, next question. Do Americans force Hollywood to remove things like remove the skin, cursing, evil themes, lies from their products that they spew all over the world? Does America force Hollywood to clean up? No, it doesn't. Okay, so here's his question. In that we don't stop it, especially as Christians, are we not condoning it? Question, have you written a letter to someone someplace complaining about the filth in Hollywood? I have. I've actually written a letter telling them that I disagree with what they're doing. Now, why? Because do you think that's going to change? No, that's not going to change it. At least before the Lord, I can say, Lord, I didn't condone it. I didn't agree with it. I didn't go along with it. Sorceries. When it's talking about sorceries, what are sorceries? For thy merchants were the great men of the earth, for by thy sorceries were all nations deceived. For by thy sorceries were all nations deceived. Now, what are sorceries? I had to do some work on digging this out. You see, evil doesn't really want us to know the truth about it. So if you go and you Google sorceries and some of these other words I'm about to explain, you're probably not going to find the real answer. But I believe I found the real answer, and it's based upon Daniel chapter 2, starting verse 1. In the second year of the reign of Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar dreamed dreams wherewith his spirit was troubled and his sleep break from him. And the king commanded to call the magicians, astrologers, sorcerers, and Chaldeans. That's the four words I want you to notice. Magicians, astrologers, sorcerers, and Chaldeans for to show the king his dreams. So they came and stood before the king. But the Bible says they couldn't show the king his dream. But Daniel, the prophet of God, did. Because there is a God in heaven that revealeth secrets to his servants. Magician is someone or those people who affect changes in people or groups of people using evil spirits. Astrologers are those people that affect changes in other people or other groups by the use or the tracking of the sun, moon, and the stars. Oh, people don't do that. Yeah, well, go tell Prince Harry that because on November 27, 2017, he announced that his engagement to Meghan Markle and he said the reason he did it then is because the stars were aligned. This is Prince Harry. The stars were aligned. He said that. Sorcery means those people who deceived or to affect changes in people, such as by pills, potions, lotions made from plants, trees, or herbs, such as, yes, drugs. However, there's something more dangerous than drugs, really. In modern day, we include movies, music, print. Sorceries, in my opinion, are actually included as movies, television shows, news, books, and music. For example, first movie was made by a horse running by 16 cameras, and then the pictures being flipped in sequence giving the appearance that a horse is running. That's where they came up with the idea of making movies. It was not a horse, of course, but it represented a horse. And then they used that. See, a sorcery is about changing people. Astrology is about changing. Magician is about changing people. So sorceries are changing people, in this case, through movies, television, news, books, things like that, music. A movie can be used like sorceries to change the mind of masses of people through their pornography, evil lies, corrupt thoughts designed to give Jesus and the gospel a bad name. 
Hence the lower church attendance over the years and fewer people receiving Jesus today. Have they been successful? Yeah, I'd say they have. Going back to the definition of foul spirit. Now, does this sound like Hollywood to you? This is the definition of foul spirit, which Revelation said is the description of America. Evil, wicked, bad, wrong, immoral, sinful, vile, dishonorable, corrupt, in- iniquitous, depraved, villainous, nefarious, vicious, malicious. Mm, I would say yes. Then you remember where it said the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. Well, if this is America, and I believe it is, it has to be a nation that has made a lot of other merchants wealthy because of her delicacies. Now, skip down a couple of paragraphs. You see, I define delicacies. Looked it up. Delicacies basically means the best, the most expensive, the most desires. Now, what nation owns the most companies, the largest companies, and leads or controls the commerce of the world? Answer, America. What nation is the largest economy in the world, according to Trump's speech to the conference at Davos? Answer, America. Now let's go to verse 4. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people. Notice the words, my people. This is God speaking to his people in this nation, telling them to come out. Yeah, but wait a minute, wait a minute. Does is, is that mean come out of the world and be you separate? Yeah, well, all Christians are supposed to be that. That's the meaning of church, or as in ecclesia, means the called out ones. So we're all supposed to be called out, called out of the world. So that's not really what it's saying. And if you go on and read the rest of the verse, it says, be not partakers of her sins, that you received not of her plague. So, yeah, we're supposed to be not sinning with her, but there is a time. If you go to Jeremiah, it says, and let every man return. Matter of fact, Jeremiah 51 verse 9 says, we would have healed Babylon, but she is not healed. Let every man return into his own country. So there you go. There is a time when the Spirit of God will begin to speak to his people all across this land. Jeremiah 51 verse 50, I believe it is, says, let Jerusalem come into your mind. I believe there will be a mass exodus of <laughs> I believe the Bible says there will be a mass exodus of both Christians and Jews from the nations around the world to move to Israel in the last days. Now let's go to verse 4. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that you be not partakers of her sin. So the question is, what nation has the highest percentage of Christians? What nation has the most Christians? What nation buys, prints, sells the most Bibles? What nation has the most church buildings? Answers. America, 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 America. Now let's go to verse 5. For her sins reached unto heaven. God hath remembered her iniquities. And you see that word remembered there? That's, that's a real big thing that points to America. Because if we look at this phrase, God hath remembered her iniquities, one can only conclude that at one time, this nation that this is speaking of had to have their sins as far as the east is from the west. So far Hath he removed our transgressions from us? In other words, this is a nation that had to have their sins washed in the blood. This is a nation that had their sins forgotten by God. And now they've been placed back upon her because they've turned from Christ and have fallen into sin. Ezekiel 33.20 says, When a righteous man doth turn from his righteousness and commit iniquity, he shall die in his sin, and his righteousness which he hath done shall not be remembered kind of does away with once saved, always saved, meaning that even though this nation was a Christian nation, we've turned away from Christ. And as a result, God is not going to wash us in the blood like he used to. We're not washed in the blood. So consequently, he sees those sins and that brings the judgment. Continuing with the phrase, God hath remembered her iniquities. What nation had their fathers, grandfathers, great-grandfathers sins forgotten washed in the blood of Jesus, but now their sons, daughters, grandsons, granddaughters have now in these last days, especially the millennials, turned from the Christian foundations to sin without a sin covering, and now God can see them. Answer, America. Now let's go to verse 6. Reward her, even as she rewarded you. Who's the you? Answer, the you is Christians. And double and her double according to her work in the cup that she has filled, filled to her double. In other words, as America has been blessed, so much torment and sorrow give her. For she saith in her heart, I sit a queen, and I'm no widow, and she'll see no sorrow. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death, mourning, and famine. And she shall be utterly burned with fire, for strong is the Lord God that judgeth her. 
The left is furious with Donald Trump. Not that they are furious with Donald Trump as much as he is the focus of their anger. Their anger is toward Jesus because they're not Christians and they hate Christ and anyone looks or acts like him. As much as they hate Trump, uh, that's just a small fraction of how they hate Christ. And when the day arrives, when the love of many has waxed cold enough, and America has, quote, given into his hand, and, quote, the same horn made war with the saints and prevailed against them, and as Revelation says, quote, it was given unto him to make war with the saints and overcome them, and power was given to him over all kindreds, tongues, and nations, when America is finally given into the hands of evil, and, quote, all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. In those days, not too distant days, all resistors to the new world order can be rounded up for destruction. And at the top of the list, as you can well guess, is going to be those people who overcame by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of their testimony, and loving not their lives unto the death. Then, everywhere the citizens obliged to defend themselves against the world minority of revolutionaries will exterminate those destroyers of civilization and the multitude disillusioned with Christianity. And those deistic spirits will from that moment be without compass or direction, anxious for an ideal, but without knowing where to render their adoration will then, here it is, here it is, receive the true light through the universal manifestation of the pure doctrine of Lucifer finally brought out into the public view. This manifestation will result in the general reactionary movement which will follow the destruction of Christianity and atheism, both conquered and exterminated at the same time that comes from three world wars. Look it up. In those days, craft will prosper, and many will fall down slain, and they quote, Many that understand among the people shall instruct many, yet they shall fall by the sword, by flame, by captivity, and by spoil many days. And the king, which rules over the world, shall, quote, do according to his will, and he shall exalt himself and magnify himself above every god, and shall speak marvelous things, that's bad, against the god of gods, and shall prosper till the indignation be accomplished. For that that is determined shall be done, unquote. Now let's go to verse 7. How much she has glorified herself and lived deliciously. So much torment and sorrow give her. For she saith in her heart, I say to queen and, and am no widow and shall see no sorrow. What nation believes it is too big to fall, too big to fail? What nation answer? America. I want you to notice the words shall see no sorrow. What nation is filled with Christians who are led by those who tell them that they will see no sorrow? that they need not worry about the end of the world because they're going to avoid it? Oh, that would be America. What nation believes in her heart that she is not only the best, but seldom even thinks of any other nation but herself? What nation does all the world tune their televisions to, and read her news and follow her elections and news and economics? The answer is America, America. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death, mourning, and famine. And she should be utterly burned with fire, for strong is the Lord who judgeth her. Question, what nation invented the nuclear bomb whose primary destructive feature is fire? What is the only nation to use a nuclear bomb in war or on another nation? Since the Bible says, for whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Would a righteous God say that destruction by fire would be perhaps a righteous judgment for a nation who used fire to destroy thousands of people at Hiroshima and Nagasaki when they turned their backs on the sacrifice blood of Christ. As you sow, so also shall you reap. The answer is America, America, and yes. And the kings of the earth who have committed fornication live deliciously with her. She shall bewail her and lament for her when they shall see the smoke of her burning. Hmm. What nation caused the world to turn to Christ as they distributed the King James Bible and consequently enjoyed the blessings of inventions, movies, manufactured goods, computers, and of late followed them now away from Christ? The answer is America. Now let's go to verse 10. Standing afar off of the fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city Babylon, what that mighty city, for in one hour is that judgment come. When in human history could an entire city be destroyed in one hour? Answer, these days. 
Now let's look at a three-verse set. I'll read quickly because we can make the point very quickly. The merchants, I'm going to ask you this. Who is this describing? The merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her, for no man buyeth their merchandise anymore. So the question here is, what nation buys all of this? The merchandise of gold, silver, precious stones, pearls, fine linen, purple silk, scarlet, and all fine wood. All men are vessels of ivory. All men are vessels of most precious wood, brass, iron, marble. Cinnamon odors, ointments, frankincense, wine, oil, fine flour, wheat, bees, sheep, horses, slaves, and souls of men. Only America, brothers, sisters. Now let's specifically look at the phrase, the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her. What nation holds more patents for new inventions? What nation would all of the nations miss if she were gone? The top five countries with the most Nobel laureates are all Western nations. Guess who leads the pack? United Nations. United States has had the most Nobel Prize winners with a total of 336 winners overall. We lead the world. What nation holds the most patents? Surprisingly, not America. China. 928,000, United States 578,000, Japan 325,000, South Korea 210,000. But here's the question. What nation do you suppose took American products and manufacturing techniques to China, Japan, and South Korea to manufacture their products, then invented, and in the process produced the ensuing patents were created as a result. In other words, even though China, Japan, and South Korea have lots of patents, who do you suppose was the reason those patents were created? Answer, America. You go to a list of prolific inventors in America. Thomas Alva Edison was America's most prolific inventor with a total of 1,093 U.S. patents. It was all about America. Now let's look at the phrase, the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her. What nation would you guess holds the most patent holders? Answer, America. Seven out of the top 14 patent holders are America. Now let's look at the verse 16. And alas, alas, the great city was clothed in fine linen and purple and scarlet and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls. Here's my biggest reason to point to the fact that America is. Not only in the Bible, specifically she is in uh, Revelation, and this is the biggest glaring incident and that, in my opinion, proves is talking about America. And the way you know this is by looking at four words, fine linen, purple, scarlet, fine linen, purple, and scarlet. As we go through this, notice those words because those words are describing America. Now, here's the biggest reason. I could spend the next hour going through all of the hundreds and hundreds of verses that I went through researching everything about fine linen. But here's the bottom line. Every, 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 to make that point, every place in the Bible, when you see fine linen, it is only talking about the servants of the Most High God. Then in every, 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 every scripture, where it says purple and scarlet, they are only talking about the priests of God. So here's the question. Fine linen and purple and scarlet are only speaking of America. So what nation is a nation of Christians and priests? Answer, America. Coming to a close now, the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her. In the eyes of God, what is the nation other than Israel which was formed by his hand? Answer, America. What nation has taken the Bible to most nations of the world? What nation has a covenant signed on the Mayflower boat, November 16, 1620, stating they're forming a new nation for the furtherance of the Christian faith? What nation has the most Christian television and radio programs? What nation prints and sells the most Bibles? What nation gives the most to other nations? The answer, America, 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 America. Those are over 50 of my reasons why I believe Revelation is speaking about America as the mystery of Babylon. Thank you for listening. Thank you for your prayers. And we do need your gifts of support too. God bless.